Reality is simply the loss of the ego. Destroy the ego by seeking its identity. Because the ego is no entity, it will automatically vanish and reality will shine forth by itself. This Bro. Hey, Mom. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Cut. 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 Welcome back to another episode of Learn With Us. Today, we got one of your suggestions from a very special person. Manab Das, one of my favorite, more recent... I don't know if you're a recent subscriber, but you've been very active recently in the comments, and all your comments are like top level they're so good yeah i want to take a second to appreciate everyone's comments oh my god because it reading through the comments has been like just hanging out with a group of friends who are interested in progressing spiritually which is like the point of this channel yeah like the the comments have been getting more and more and more thoughtful as our channel has progressed and it's like we get so many like paragraph comments that and are just like love so good and we love that we like try our best to respond to all of them because that's like that's the core of like what we're doing what we care for yeah and it's so cool when we see a comment paragraphs look and there are already replies to it oh yeah that's even that, better that's happened that's a few like, times and i just lose my yeah, mind yeah yeah that that is the best <laughs> when it's like a whole string of like discussion on yeah. the issues oh my gosh so anyway good. manav das killing it yeah so you suggested a video by a teacher that i've been recently getting into his name is ramana maharshi and oh my word the stories about this man mm. it's like maharaji level stuff mm. it's like whoa and so this is apparently your favorite video on youtube and so this is gonna let's be some ride. stuff let's do it <laughs> this is called talks with sri Ram ramana maharshi maybe there's like the manuscript of the talk mm. i guess so yeah Wow, that's... So we're just going to be getting his raw words. <laughs> that ring. <laughs> Dang. If there be a goal to be reached, it cannot be permanent. The goal must already be there. We seek to reach the goal with the ego. But the goal exists before the ego. What is in the goal is even prior to our birth, to the birth of the ego. Because we exist, the ego appears to exist too. If we look on the self as the ego, then we become the ego. If as the mind, we become the mind. If as the body, we become the body. It is the thought which builds up sheaths in so many ways. That's that's coming in hot. That's coming in really hot, <laughs> especially that it's being read by a poet. Yeah, like this. This feels very high. Yes, very <laughs> very proper. I like I like how he's saying the thing that we identify with becomes us. Yes. If it's the body, it's the body. If it's yes. a thought, it's a thought. Yes. Said said in a way. That is a bit different than any other teacher, yeah, which I love. Yeah, I yeah. love how it just each teacher gives you their own spice, mm. and that you know you just hear it so many times in so many different variants, and it becomes very clear that all of these teachers came to those things by themselves, mm. and they're not repeating anything that anyone else told them. And so that that solidifies truths like this mm. so much more for me. What what you what you think you are, what you feel you are, you become. Yeah. Let's go. 
The shadow on the water is found to be shaking. Can anyone stop the shaking of the shadow? If it should cease to shake, you would not notice the water, but only the light. Similarly, to take no notice of the ego and its activities, but see only the light behind. The ego is the I thought. The true I is the self. Realization is already there. The state free from thoughts is the only real state. There is no such action as realization. Is there anyone who is not realizing the self? Does anyone deny his own existence? Speaking of realization, oh. it implies... Oh my gosh, this is going too fast. Yeah, yeah, Holy this is... Holy smokes. Wow, yeah, we're going to rewind that a bit. I had something to say. I, I love the way he described the ego as a surface thing mm. and the the self as the thing behind it the ocean yeah. as as the water rippling on the surface like that was just so so poetic in of itself and this seems like this was just a talk that he gave and someone might have written it down and so if you're channeling that amount of poetry mm. just well you speak. off the dome that's incredible and also from my learnings of Ramana Maharshi, I have learned that he says that the essential thing that we do is ask, who am I? Mm. Which is, that's different than a lot of people. That, that That's like just a different flavor yeah, than you usually yeah, get yeah. with spirituals. He says, who am I? And that the, there is an I and there is a self that is your essence. Mm. But I don't think he means essence as in something unique to you mm -hmm. or yeah. or anything that we would normally consider the self you know mm -hmm. I, I like how he said like there's no such thing as realization because the thing that is always is already oh you gosh. is that... the self yeah I... and it's like all the other things that we're perceiving and then somehow identifying ourselves with something's perceiving all that. So it's like, yeah, it's almost making yes, realization yes. feel like a, once you drop those other things, uh, like, yeah. Oh stop my falsely. gosh. That makes me think about how it feels like the more you become awakened, it's as if you've always been there. The true you has always been there. And I feel like that's kind of what's being hinted at here. It's like when I feel like I'm in my truest form, my truest state, it's like I'm not sad about the past and not being in that state when I'm when I'm in the truest state because I was always there. You know, there was this there was like the ego, the surface. Oh my gosh, it was the surface of the water the whole time mm. that I thought I was. But then there was all of this going on that was has always been going on, but I'm just not recognizing mm. it. And once you recognize once you like you jump into that, you're like, "Oh, I've always had this depth." And so this the time in the past is not time wasted. Mhm. Mm yeah. And there's there's times where I feel like more recently that I can feel a separation in myself growing. It's really interesting. It's like I'll be saying things and recognizing their emptiness and recognizing that they are just a mental construct. I'll be doing something that's ego-driven, recognizing that it's ego-driven, but I'll still keep doing it. But then there's the thing behind it that's like has so much depth to it that's also, I'm like very conscious of that, but that for some reason isn't able to completely take over yet. Mm. So there's like a bit of separation happening and I'm really interested to see where this goes. Mm. But it's like, it's like I'm existing on different planes and I keep switching back and forth. So I do feel like I've been contradicting, my, contradicting myself a lot lately mm. in the ways that I've been, yeah. It's been really confusing. Yeah. But interesting. Yeah. Nice.
Is there anyone who is not realizing the self? Does anyone deny his own existence? Speaking of realization, it implies two selves, the one to realize, the other to be realized. What is not already realized is sought to be realized. Once we admit our existence, how is it that we do not know the self? Oh, because of the thoughts, the mind. Quite so. It is the mind that stands between and veils our happiness. How do we know that we exist? If you say because of the world around us, then how do you know that you existed in deep sleep? How to get rid of the mind? Is it the mind that wants to kill itself? The mind cannot kill itself. So your business is to find the real nature of the mind. Then you will know that there is no mind. When the self is sought, the mind is nowhere. Abiding in the self, one need not worry about the mind. Dude. How about, I've heard this in his talks before, but he talks a lot about your different states of reality, your different planes of reality. And, and who is the self that remains across all of those planes? Because you could say that it's your thoughts. You could say that it's your body. You could say all these things, but then he says, did any of that exist when you were in deep sleep? And then the answer is no. And then he says, well, do you not think that you existed when you were in deep sleep? Like you could feel, this is incredible. Mm. You could feel intense pain. And if you remained asleep, you would not feel the pain. So that's his way of saying that he like expands on this, that all the things are happening in your mind. Mm. Like you can have so much more control than you think you can over things like pain because you can just put yourself in other states. Yeah, it's interesting for me because deep sleep to me is a completely different thing than dreaming. Mm, like deep yes. sleep is like, I'm gone, gone. No, definitely. I think that's and what he's yeah, talking yeah. about. And then yeah. you, you come back and it's like, where was I? Exactly. And that's, exactly. it's just the mystery. Yeah, yeah. And he, he just, you should listen to some of his longer lectures because yeah. he goes, he'll go like in, in on the idea of deep sleep. Nice. And where do you that's, go? That's, 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 yeah, stuff. I would highly, highly recommend. I guess it's not lectures by him. It's like narrated lectures of yeah. maybe books that he's written or something, but they're incredible. Yeah. Okay. How to get rid of fear. What is fear? It is only a thought. If there is anything beside the self, there is reason to fear. Who sees the second? First, the ego arises and sees objects as external. If the ego does not rise, the self alone exists and there is no second. For anything external to oneself implies the seer within. Seeking it there will arise no doubt, no fear, not only fear, all other thoughts centered around the ego will disappear along with it. This method seems to be quicker than the usual one of cultivating qualities alleged necessary for salvation. All bad qualities center around the ego. When the ego is gone, realization results by itself. There are neither good nor bad qualities in the self. That, that is something there was just one line there. I missed so much of that. Mm. And that's just, that's just going to happen. Yeah. This is huge. Yeah. This is this absolutely is massive. Mm. This is a, this is a watch every, every day for a month type video. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but there was one line when the ego falls away, something like the self-realization happens mm. and it's, it, it just happens. And what I've been realizing through experience, through hardship, is that 
the states that you might desire or look for, you have way less control than you think about bringing those states in. You can only, like say you want to bring a state of meditation in. I've been realizing that you can only put yourself in a way that invites it in. Mm. Like, like he's talking about like the disillusionment of the ego that invites something in and it just happens. And it's like, it's like open channel. It's like you are an absolute channel of wisdom and energy and you're, it's just like very humbling because you realize that you're not creating the things you're not bringing in a state of meditation. You're Mm. not doing X, Y, Z that could cause spiritual ego to occur. Something like that. And so it also takes the pressure off. Like it takes the pressure off you. If all you need to do is open the door for a meditative state for, uh, a clear state of mind for, for thoughts to fall away. If you just open the door for that, it'll walk in when it needs to walk in. Mm. The self is free from all qualities. Qualities pertain to the mind only. It is beyond quality. If there is unity, there will also be duality. The numeral one gives rise to other numbers. The truth is neither one nor two. It is as it is. The difficulty is to be in the thought-free state. Reality is simply the loss of the ego. Destroy the ego by seeking its identity. Because the ego is no entity, it will automatically vanish and reality will shine forth by itself. This... Bro. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's just awesome. That's just awesome. How about, how about that wordplay when he just goes, if there's, uh, if there's oneness, there must be other, because one gives rise to the next numbers. Yes. And then, yes. and just yes. the fact that in being, you have only the mind creates qualities. Mm. being has no qualities yeah and the next thing he said was like almost none of that matters in a way like once you investigate the ego which is all of your qualities all of Mm. your qualities then you realize that the ego is creating itself (sighs) also in the pictures the way he's just like looking at the camera this this sort of like side eyed knowing and Mm. i I get a vibe of full knowing and through that love and acceptance of whoever's on the other side of that camera Mm. i feel like i get i'm just getting very comforted just looking at yeah his face right now yeah Mm. it's beautiful this is the direct method whereas all other methods are done only retaining the ego. In those paths there arise so many doubts and the eternal question remains to be tackled finally. But in this method, the final question is the only one and it is raised from the very beginning. No sadhanas are necessary for engaging in this quest. No sadhanas are required. For this thing to happen that 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 just hits me right mm. that just hits me right like i feel like there is a draw when we're going into this type of work and i'm sure you feel it as well to to become more and more strict with a practice to like seek out going somewhere mm. doing something different like, do you hear that in there? Like, doing something different. You don't need to do things differently. Like, going somewhere else. You don't need to go somewhere else. You know, because it's all stuff that's internal. Mm. And it doesn't have to do with what you're doing or where you're going. 
Like, of course, say, say if we went to Isha Center in Tennessee, that would maybe create the space for the thing to enter. But we could also do that here. I feel like we. Mm. the only reason why I would go to, say, a guru or an enlightened teacher or a place like Isha Center is because I would only want to do it with the full recognition that I could do the same things in this apartment. Yeah. Or else it's... Oh, someone said this. I think it was uh, Jiddu said... Yeah. <laughs> You need to be a light to yourself because if anyone else is the light, then you're just a candle that can get blown out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's such a genuine yeah. line. That's yeah. so good. Yeah. Then you're not an eternally lit candle. Yeah. Because you don't even, you don't know you're, how. You're just a candle. Jeez. And then he always says, I'm not light. your guru. I'm not your teacher. Mm. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> oh man yeah. so important to recognize that anything that a teacher says that lands with you and it changes your life that that was you like you had to allow that information to come in mm. and sit in you like that that information could have just stopped before it even hit your ears and you just didn't listen to it like i feel like that's happened to me where i'll watch a video it doesn't hit me. Same teacher, same thing. Then I'll watch it later, and it totally changes me. But it's because I was ready, mm. and that—that's that—that's me, you know. Because I, it's interesting because then that feels like ego, but in a way, it's it's not. You just need self empowerment without ego. I feel like. Mm. Yeah, that's a. That's some that's some complex stuff that I'm not wrapping my brain around, but okay. I'll trust you. Okay. 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 <laughs> let, let me know if this made sense to you at all. <laughs> have you seen God? I asked. And if you have, can you enable me to see him? I'm willing to pay any price, even my life, but your part of the bargain is that you must show me God. No, he answered. I cannot show you God or enable you to see God because God is not an object that can be seen. God is the subject. He is the seer. Oh Don't concern yourself gosh. with objects that can be seen. Find out who the seer is. He also added, you alone <sighs> are God, as if to rebuke me for looking for a God who is outside and apart from me. Oh my God. At the conclusion of his words, he looked at me, and as he gazed into my eyes, my whole body began to tremble and shake. A thrill of nervous energy shot through my body. My nerve endings felt as if they were dancing and my hair stood on end. Within me, I became aware of the spiritual heart. This is not the physical heart. It is, rather, the source and support of all that exists. Within this heart, I saw or felt something like a closed bud. It was very shiny and bluish. With the Mahashi looking at me, and with myself in a state of inner silence, I felt this bud open and bloom. I use the word bud, but this is not an exact description. It would be more correct to say that something that felt bud-like opened and bloomed within me in the heart. And when I say heart, I don't mean that the flowering was located in a particular place in the body. This heart, this heart of my heart, was neither inside the body nor out of it. I can't give a more exact description of what happened. <laughs> that was oh awesome. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you noticed this, but I was like swaying a lot and you were like nodding. And right when that story started to unfold... And the way he looked at this person, we both just froze. <laughs> no, I didn't notice. That was it. cool. <sighs> I really like how this, whoever the storyteller was <clears throat> here, was like, and not, was very specific about the fact that the metaphors they were using were not 
even an attempt to describe. Yes. He, he was he was like, because <clears throat> because right when you hear something like that, mm. you start to, or it's very easy to start to try to recreate that experience almost yes. in yourself. Yes. And it, it's and that stopped you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's another thing that Jiddu is a master of is mm. lay it out and stop you before you can analyze or create yeah you know? right when he notices you getting too excited yeah oh, so I, I think that's that was cool another thing that ramdas has mentioned is that <clears throat> he rarely spoke mm. which i <clears throat> i've been wanting to do this for a while like just to be able to interact with people without speaking in a way that's much more impactful than words could ever do Mm. that's i'm trying to let go of desires but it's hard not (laughs) to feel like i desire that like Mm. that is something that i feel like i would love to just be equipped to do to go throughout life with a gaze like that that could help people in a way that words could never do Mm. it's beautiful my gosh the keystone of the maharshi's teaching is his self-inquiry or atma vishara his infallible direct path to self-realization coupled with total devotional surrender to God, self, or guru. Broadly speaking, Sri Bhagavan tells us that the immortal self, or Satchitananda, or pure existence consciousness awareness bliss, is already there inherent in each of us. The difficulty is we do not recognize that, our true nature, or essential I amness, because it is veiled and obscured by many latent tendencies and habits of the egotistic mind, which act as a mirror and project a dream of the world, the body and the mind. Our identification with the mind and body is the chief reason for our failure to know ourselves as we really are. Through persistent self-inquiry, devotion and surrender of the egotistic mind, to God or the Satguru in the spiritual heart, this obscuration and identification is gradually and gracefully removed. Did you say Satguru? Uh, Yeah, it sounds like Sat. But I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of these names are used for like multiple teachers. Yes, definitely. Like Maharaji. Yeah, is a very common name. I do you know what sad guru means. I don't know why I've never thought. I, about I feel that. like I've heard it once. Yeah, but like he explained it one time. But let I forget. us know in the comments mm. if you know mm. what sad guru means, because I would be fascinated to know. Because there's no way that that's not a very well thought out thing. <laughs> the the inquiry of self to the point of no longer identifying with the body is such a crazy thing yeah like i i am no or maybe i'm close maybe i'm not close i don't i don't know yeah yeah. (laughs) but that's one of the things that's definitely been a practice i've been working through is like Mm. just trying to sit in absolute stillness to the point where you start to like forget what the body is similar to when you like Mm. fall asleep or whatever that's incredible and you have these moments of like completely forgetting that you yeah. have something here yeah. or because or... yeah. the crazy thing is then you have to like that that's why making like him talking about deep sleep as a way to not identify with all mm. these other things like the body because that's so difficult not to identify with your body i feel like i really love the way he describes that because then you do wake up after and then you do have the body because that's part of your, that's what Ramdas calls your curriculum here as a human. Like you, mm. you were put here as a human 
to be human. You weren't put here to ascend your humanity. You know? So, Mm. can you hold in the same moment non-identification with the body, but also go through life with your body in full love of the body, of the things around, without clinging, without grabbing? That's that's the trick. And uh, that's the trick of it all. And it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> we can be sure of that. Until the immortal self is realized. That is the full power of absolute consciousness and is known. The world is seen as real because the substrate is perceived to be as Brahman. Somerset Maugham, the British novelist, visited Ramanus Ramam for a few hours. The brief contact he had with Bhagavan inspired Maugham so much, he decided to use him as the model for a fictional guru in The Razor's Edge, his masterpiece which was published a few years later in 1944. Maugham also wrote a non-fiction account of his visit in an essay entitled The Saint, which was published 20 years after the event in 1958. The following account, which is taken from this essay, records Maugham's impressions of this meeting with Bhagavan. He uttered a few words of cordial greeting and sat on the ground not far from the pallet in which I lay. After the first few minutes during which his eyes with a gentle benignity rested on my face, he ceased to look at me but, with a sidelong stare of peculiar fixity, gazed, as it were, over my shoulder. His body was absolutely still, but now and then one of his feet tapped lightly on the earthen floor. He remained thus, motionless, for perhaps fifteen minutes, and they told me later that he was concentrating in meditation upon me. Then he came to, if I may so put it, and again looked at me. He asked me if I wished to say anything to him, or ask any question. I was feeling weak and ill, and said so, whereupon he smiled and said, Silence is also conversation. (laughs) He turned his head away slightly, and resumed his concentrated meditation, again looking, as it were, over my shoulder. No one said a word, The other persons in the hut, standing by the door, kept their eyes riveted upon him. After another fifteen minutes, he got up, bowed, smiled farewell, and, slowly leaning on his stick, he limped out of the hut, followed by his disciples. his conversation too isn't that incredible how he didn't even regard the person what the person said mm. about their their troubles their illness it's just totally the <laughs> silence is conversation too that's one of the coolest lines I've ever heard mm that's uh that's one of those that's that's just got to be laid into felt like, into it, yeah yeah I, I, I no there's nothing to say about it mm. yeah that's an in, that's incredible it's amazing how even these people who are writing about the experience are so clear in the way that they're writing that there's no way they could properly describe what happened to them. Like, you could hear this story and be like, this sounds like a pretty average story. He sat, he meditated about me, he said one cool thing, walked away. But this is a writer who's writing an essay called The Saint that was published 20 years after the experience, and that was the whole experience. 
So imagine how impactful that was to this person's life in a way that goes beyond words. Mm. It's incredible. Amazing. There is no greater mystery than this. Ourselves being the reality, we seek to gain reality. We think that there is something hiding our reality and that it must be destroyed before the reality is gained. It is ridiculous. A day will dawn when you will yourself laugh at your past efforts. That which will be on the day you laugh is also here and now. Oh, so it's a great game of pretending. Yes. In Yoga Vishista it is said, what is real is hidden from us, but what is false is revealed as true. We are actually experiencing the reality only. Still, we do not know it. Is it not a wonder of wonders? The quest, who am I, is the axe with which to cut off the ego. That's what that was. Mm. Look at this man. Dude. How incredible is that? Wow. Yeah. I yeah. need I need some time. With yeah. That. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. The the whole approach of go after the who am i yeah is is fascinating it's funny because i had to read descartes for uh a philosophy class like a history of philosophy Mm -hmm. and or history of modern philosophy and all of descartes stuff is based on the question who am i you know Mm -hmm. like he starts by stripping everything wow and goes that that's where he gets to the idea of i think therefore i am like the classic thing very far from this yeah yeah at least exactly like but the thing is from there he struggles to prove that he is Hmm. like the whole thing feels like a i must be something and like a a push in every way possible to make it back to reality meaning anything you know, and it almost mm. feels like this type of an approach is like, because he, he keeps repeating how it's all an illusion. Yeah. And it's almost like he goes to the who am I? And at that same part where Descartes might have struggled to go this way. Yeah. He just like, let go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like. And that's the that's ego it. that's struggling to bring the argument to argue in the first place mm. and bring the argument in a full make it circle a whole philosophy exactly make it a whole thing that just like links together perfectly it, one of our roommates and i were having this discussion yesterday of our whole school system and all of this stuff that we do being like now that we're at an age where we are becoming responsible for our lives you can see you can ask the question like why does a kid who's 12 years old need to be the best in their class at math the best at whatever xyz and then you kind of run that story forward and you see like it's because they want to go to a good high school after that it's because they want to go to a good college 
After that, it's because they want to have a good job where they make a lot of money and have a lot of things. After that, and you just keep going, and there's never actually a thing. Yes. And then it's like, it almost feels the same to me in like Descartes type approach. It's like, mm. we're trying to get to a thing. And then something like this is like, can you give up the th th the idea of a thing? Yes. Because it's uh, that's also so inherent in the teaching is that it's right here and it's been right here the whole time. Yeah. And when you, when you realize that, it'll still be right here like it was, mm. which just is. I... I love that. That was so good. So good. So good. Incredible. Yeah. But, it, dude, that's... We should do this with a few of the, the videos we've watched. Rewatch it, like, whenever in, like, dude. six months. Do another reaction. Or yeah. or do a meta reaction. React to our reaction. Oh, okay. That's too far. That's too far. <laughs> I, like, I like the first idea. <laughs> I like the meta. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think that that, and see how our perspective grows. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. What do you guys think? Were there, what were the main things we missed that you guys picked up on? There were hundreds of Or those. what were things based on what we said that we did right or wrong? Because there are rights and wrongs. Your whole back was like... <laughs> I hope you guys heard that. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah Alrighty, folks yeah thank you again for sharing this yeah beautiful piece yeah this was incredible much love much love